Yo guys, today we are going to talk about my workflow on how I design a project from start to finish. To begin, let us assume that I already have a client. So let's say you already met with a client and they already have a lot or site. So I won't be talking about the whole client interaction process in detail. I will save that for another video. But as an overview, I usually ask the clients their spatial requirements, what color palette they like, what architecture style they prefer, and a whole lot of other information that could help me formulate a design that they will truly love. After that, the first thing I usually do is I go to the lot for an initial site inspection. This is where I take note of the certain things about the lot like the location of existing trees. There's like a huge rock in the middle of your lot and all the variables that could affect the way your structure interacts with the site. I also like to come back to the site at certain times of the day to see the varying site conditions. Hell, you can even camp out at night if you're not afraid of ghosts which I am, so I don't really do that. Anyways, the things I often look for are the things you don't usually foresee with a normal site analysis. Things like random noise sources, sources of bad smells, or does your neighbor's window reflect some sort of unwanted light into your site, and you know, stuff like that. Okay, so after I've taken note of that, I now formulate my site analysis. I usually just sketch a rough drawing of the lot and the variables that I have found followed by the sun path diagram and the location of prominent winds. I'll also make a more detailed video on how to do site analysis someday in the future, so subscribe if you guys want to see that. Anywho, after I do the sketch of the site analysis, I now proceed to plotting the lot bearings using AutoCAD. So I know most of you will say, why not just use Revit? Well, I do use Revit, but I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I prefer this workflow cause ya boy ain't that good with Revit yet. So yeah, in order to maximize my creativity, I still use the programs that I am really good at. Okay, so after I plot the lot in AutoCAD, I now go to SketchUp to do the site contours or the terrain of the lot. This is the reason why I'm trying to get good at Revit is so that I don't have to switch between AutoCAD and SketchUp, but until then, I will stick to my usual method. After I've done the lot terrain in SketchUp, I now go back to AutoCAD to do the whole planning process. I usually like to begin with the floor plans, so I usually do around three schemes of floor plans that I show to the clients for some comments and criticisms. I ask them to pick which one they prefer the most and from that plan I work in collaboration with the clients to refine the floor plans. Once I have a plan that is approved by the client, I go back to SketchUp, import my AutoCAD plans, then I work on the overall massing and three-dimensional shape of the project. So for this, I usually meet with my clients again to show them some precedents or inspirational works to see what are their tastes likes and dislikes. So from their input, I come up with some exterior views of the structure. I do a few more meetings with the clients to refine the elevations and the exterior designs to the client's likings and boom, we're done with the initial design phase. So for the final output, I use V-Ray for SketchUp for the initial 3D render. Then I use Lightroom and Photoshop to finalize the render. So when presenting my final design to the client, I usually like to bring my laptop with me so that I can open up the SketchUp software and show them the various views of the house and also to explain the design of the house while navigating through the three-dimensional space of SketchUp. After all things are approved and finalized, all that's left for me to do is export the elevations from SketchUp back into AutoCAD then create the full working drawing that is to be submitted to the city building official's office. And that's the design phase. So disclaimer guys, this workflow is what I use since I predominantly design low to mid-rise residential houses and I find that I design faster with this method than when I'm using Revit. For now, hopefully I, I will master Revit in the future. So now if you guys plan on applying to firms that handle bigger projects, I suggest that you guys go learn BIM softwares like Revit and Archicad, since that is pretty much the industry standard and that is where I see the future of architecture drafting is headed. Anyways, if you guys want to learn Revit, you guys can check out the Balkan Architect here on YouTube. He has a lot of great Revit tutorials ranging from basics to advanced, so go check him out. And with that being said, that is a summarized insight into my architectural workflow. I hope you guys learned something from today's video. If not, I'm, I'm truly sorry I, I failed you. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and subscribing. No? Okay, I'll, I guess I'll just see you guys on my next video then. A flying piece! <laughs> also, comment down below if you guys want to see me do a Minecraft video. A lot of you guys were suggesting it, so... Yeah, maybe I'll do a Minecraft video. Anyways, yeah. Flying piece again. <laughs>